This is the fifth session of my tutorial on trapping wild pigs. My name is Myron Tingey. The focus of this session is corral trap gates. A gate is a point of entry into or out of a corral trap. It requires a latch, which is a device to hold the gate open and release for closure. The latch requires a trigger, which activates the latch. The function of a gate for wild pig corrals is to allow entry and then to prevent exit. The transition between these two gate functions is critical. It can be pig actuated, remote control, or it could be integrated into the design of the trap. A gate that doesn't consistently allow entry or prevent exit will give disappointing results. Before looking at the types of gates, I will discuss triggers and latches used to control transition of gate functions. Keep in mind that triggers release latches. An example of a body contact trigger is a tight cable suspended at pig height across the trap. I used steel cables in my box traps. I've used camouflage fishing line in corral traps. The cables and lines were attached to latches. An example of a routine contact trigger is a bucket full of food on a concrete block. When a pig pushes the bucket off the block, a cable attached to the bucket releases a gate latch. Electronic triggers for pigs are similar to the old, those used for humans to sound alarms and open doors. This is an example of a hinged knee latch. They are strong and stable, yet require very little trigger force to activate. This is an example of a pneumatic cylinder latch. The pin is retracted when compressed air is applied to the front port of the cylinder. Pin latches may also be purely mechanical, as such as in common door latches. Finger latches are not as common. I used them on box traps I made. They worked quite well for side hinged gates. With remote control, the trigger is a, an electric relay. It has a low current solenoid that activates a high current switch. The high current switch applies power to a latch. The latch closes the gate. For this to work, you've got to have real-time video monitoring. The trigger options are these. If you're using off-site internet monitoring, then you can use direct cell phone relay triggers or Wi-Fi relay triggers, which utilize indirect cell phone service through a, a mobile hotspot. If you're actually on site to do the monitoring, you can use a radio frequency trigger, very similar to those used for garage door openers or uh, car locks. Remote control latches are typically powered pins. One option is a high current electric solenoid. Heavy drop gates may require leveraged latches because the solenoids don't have adequate power to retract. Or if you use a top hinge gate without a leveraged latch, it may be relatively slow going, closing. Another option is a pneumatic cylinder. These have adequate power for even the heaviest gates. They're fast acting, but they do require compressed air at the site. Some corral traps do not have conventional gates with a trigger and a latch. The transition of functions is integrated into the design of the trap. A distinguishing feature of these traps is that pigs must push against the one-way barrier to gain entry. Once inside the trap, the entrance feature prevents exit. The rooter type does not have a gate, 
does have a gate, but neither a latch nor a trigger. Pigs enter the trap by pushing on a hinged gate panel. Hinges may be on the top or the side of a rigid framed panel. The figure 6 gate function was introduced in the second tutorial session. The figure C gate function is basically a mirror image, figure 6. Neither have a discrete gate. Pigs push against an unframed panel to gain entry. Videos describing these traps can be found on YouTube. The pig, pig brig was also mentioned in the second session, made with fabric netting. It does not have a discrete gate. Similar in function to the other two traps mentioned above, the pigs either enter by pushing under a net barrier, which makes escape unlikely. For these types of traps to be effective, training of the pigs is critical. Training involves holding the traps open and feeding the pigs until they become habituated to entry. Gradually reducing the opening size is often helpful. Drop gates, sometimes called guillotine gates, are my favorite. They are the fastest closing of the three types of gates. Although all three types are relatively immune to the efforts of pigs to escape, drop gates are the most immune. Drop gates slide up and down in two U-shaped channels. The opening of these gates is typically three feet tall for corrals with six foot height. Width may be from three feet to 10 feet. Some trappers will use two or more synchronized drop gates to allow pigs to feel less claustrophobic. Drop gates may be made with wood or steel. Plans for wood gates I have seen on YouTube were made with 2x4 lumber and plywood. For builders without welders, wooden drop gates are a good option. My recent drop gates feature U-shaped stall channels purchased from a local steel supplier. These channels were formed from thin sheet steel, perhaps eight, 16 or 18 gauge and they're designed for making horse stalls. A 12-foot stall channel cut in half is enough for one drop gate. Wide gates weigh more and require stronger latches than do narrow gates. Latch strength may be achieved with levers and weak pin retractors or with strong pin retractors. I first used an electric solenoid with 17 pounds retracting force. Later, I switched to pneumatic cylinders that had 177 to 314 pounds retracting force with a 100 psi supply of compressed air. These pneumatic latches were more than strong enough for the heaviest gate and eliminated the need for leverage. One entire tutorial session, number nine, will focus on pneumatic latches. Top hinge gates are effective, but have some disadvantages. They require more time to close than drop gates. They may need to be set near vertical in their position to compensate for weak pin retracting latches. In the near vertical starting position, they are the slowest of all gate types. Top hinged gates are also the most susceptible to being pulled open far enough for captured pigs to escape. Side hinged gates may be single door or double door. The latter are sometimes called saloon doors because they resemble the doors seen in old episodes of Gunsmoke and other western movies. I used a side hinged single door on the box traps I built. They worked well on box traps, but there are better choices for corral traps. The type of gate you select must be influenced by the type of latch you plan to use. Otherwise, the combination may not function properly. There are a variety of gates for wild pigs. There are different latches and triggers for these gates. I have used drop gates 
top hinged gates and side hinged gates. I prefer drop gates for both pig activated and remote control latches. Hinged knee latches are my preference for pig activated traps. I use pneumatic cylinders exclusively for remote control latches. The next tutorial will focus on pipe feeders, an inexpensive, versatile tool for trapping wild pigs. After that, four sessions will cover triggers and latches in more detail.